previously was that the brothers, the sons of Jacob came to Joseph and of course Joseph did not reveal himself at that time and they wanted food and he said well you know he kind of quizzed him about do you have a father or a, another brother and so they told him everything so he said I'm going to keep Simeon here and in front of them he handcuffed him and put him in jail he says until you bring that younger son otherwise I won't know that you guys have been telling the truth I think you're spies so he was just accusing them of that because he wanted to see his younger brother. He really did. So chapter 43 says, And the famine was sore in the land, and it came to pass, when they had eaten up all the corn which they had bought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, Go again and buy a little food. And Judah, Judah becomes a speaker now for the group. And Judah spake unto him, saying, the man did solemnly protest to us, saying, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. So he's telling his dad, Benjamin's got to go, or we're going to starve to death. But if thou will not send him, we're not going down, because they already knew. He doesn't want to see their face unless a brother's there. For the man says... Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. And Israel said, This is a really good question. Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as to tell the man whether he had a brother? And they said, The man asked us straightly of our state and of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? <laughs> He's wondering about his dad. Have ye another brother? He's wondering about his, his little brother. And we told him according to the tenor of these words. Because, see, they were afraid of Joseph. Because he's confronting them. And he's not asking if they have a brother or, or, or she. He, he did, yes. But it's like he knows already. Yeah. But he wants to know if they're still alive. Yeah. Could we certainly know that he was going to say, so the brother have a good defense for saying, look, he asked us these questions. How would we know he was going to ask us to bring Benjamin back with him? We had no idea. And Judah said unto Israel, his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou and our little ones. I will be a surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee, and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame forever. He's taking full responsibility for Benjamin. For except we had lingered, surely now we had returned the second time. So Judah's saying, if we had done it right away, we would already been there and back. So, and Judah said unto Israel his father, send the lad with me and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou and our little ones. They all had families. Verse 11, And their father Israel said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best of the fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, spices, myrrh, nuts, and almonds. These are things they must have had, I don't know, in store, or these things weren't affected by the famine. I'm not sure about that. And take double money, because remember, he put their money back in their sacks. So he's saying, take double money. Take the money they gave you, and then you're going to take more money to buy corn. Take double money in your hand, and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks. Carry it again in your hand. For adventure, it was an oversight. Take also your brother, and arise. Go. Go unto the man. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man. He does that he may send you away your other brother that's Sibian and if I be bereaved of my children I am bereaved he's saying whatever happens it happens there's nothing I can do about it at this point because we're going to starve to death and the men took the present and they took double money in their hand and Benjamin and rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph and when Joseph saw Benjamin with them he said to the ruler of the house, Bring these men home, 
and slay. That means you're, they're going to slay an animal. And make ready. So he's going to have a feast. For these men shall dine with me at noon. And the man did as Joseph asked him to. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house. They're probably really scared now. They don't know this is going to be good. They're thinking, it's about the money. <laughs> you know, they're you know, they're still wondering because the money was in their sacks again. And this is the first time they've been back. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time, are we brought in that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and take our asses. So he's gonna make slaves out of us and take our, our mules or our, our donkeys. That's what an ass is, is donkey. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house and they communed with him at the door of the house and said, oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food. And it came to pass when we came to the inn that we opened our sacks and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Our money in full weight and we brought it again in our hands. So he's already telling the steward. And he's not even asking for that. No. But they don't know anything. They just think, oh, well, he's bringing us into to his house. This is, this is bad. We're going we're gonna to be taken as slaves, which is the least that they deserve. And the other money we have brought down into our hands to buy food. So they're saying we brought the money that was in our sacks, and then we brought other money to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And he said, this is what the steward said, Peace be to you and fear not. Wow. Your God and the God of your father, that means the God of mm -hmm. Jacob, hath given you treasure in your sacks. Wow. They're saying God did it. I had your money. He's the guy that put it in, the guy they're talking to. He says, I had your money. And he brought Simeon out unto them. So he's saying, it was, it's because of your God that I put that money back in your sacks. So things are starting to look better. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water and they washed their feet and he gave their asses provender. That just means hay, food. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon. For they heard that they should eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to the earth unto him. Okay, now this is the full fulfillment of the dream because now Benjamin is with him. Now it's all the brothers. Before it was, was not all the brothers, right? It was just the 10 brothers. Now it's all the brothers bowing down to him. And he asked them of their welfare and said, is your father well? <laughs> yeah. The old man of whom ye spake, he's still not revealing that he knows, is he yet alive? And they answered, thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. That means they're going all the way to the floor. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and says, is this your younger brother of whom you spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. So he's like giving a blessing to Benjamin right there. And Joseph made haste for his bowels. That means his soul and his heart did yearn upon his brother and he sought where to weep and he entered into his chamber and wept there seeing his own brother his only brother he couldn't hold back the tears so he had to leave the room verse 31 and he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said set on bread put on the bread and they set on for him by himself and once you understand this, they sent 
Joseph's food by himself. I'm going to explain what this is. And for them, by themselves. So his brothers, they were all in the same room, but the brothers were at one table. Joseph was at another table, and the Egyptians were at another table. It was against the law of the Egyptians to eat with a Hebrew. So they all knew that Joseph was Hebrew. So they never ate with Joseph. Even though they'd be in the same room, it was against the Egyptian law. So they know that these brothers here are Hebrews too. So that's why it said that way. And it had been 22 years since he had seen Benjamin. Benjamin was probably just a, a kid the last time he saw him. Okay, and they said for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews. For that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. And they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest to his youth. And the men marveled at one another. So they set them down at the table according to their ages. And the men are going, how, how could they know this? How could they possibly know our ages? Oh, they're so scared. What they yeah, they're thinking, I can't believe. They just, they were marveling. They're going, this can't be real. How can somebody know our ages? They were set at the table, oh all according to their ages. Oh and they're so blind with tears that they cannot. I don't know. They don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. And he sent messes. Messes are, if you've ever heard the term from the army, it's food. You call it a mess hall. That's where you eat. A mess is called food. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him. So he sent each one of them, but to Benjamin's mess was five times as much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry. They were merry with him. They were now they were having fun. They didn't know why, but but the wine probably helped. <laughs> and he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill each man's sacks with food, as much as they can carry. And put every man's money in his sack. See, he's still not done with them. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest. This is going to be in Benjamin's sack. And his corn money. And now the steward, who's been doing this all along, he did according to what Joseph had said. So he's still testing his brothers is what he's doing. And the silver cup wasn't necessarily like a chalice. It was more like a bowl. And it was used for divining, like they would put leaves in it or whatever. Not that Joseph would do that, but that's what it was used for. But he clearly wouldn't be using it for that. But that's what the silver cup was for. And soon as the morning was light and the men went on their way, they and their asses, and when they were gone out of the city and not far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up now and follow after him. And when you do overtake them, say unto them, Why did you reward good with evil? Is not this in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? That means you figure out mysteries. That's a heathen practice. He's saying that because they think that he's the Egyptian. Ye have done evil in so doing. And, and he overtook them and he spake these words unto them. And they said unto him, Wherefore, my Lord, these words, God forbid that thy servant should do anything. They're just shocked that, that he's even coming and accusing them of stealing. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths, we, we brought again unto thee. They're showing how honest they are out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold? And this is really crazy. With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, they're so sure they don't have it, both let him die, and we will also be your Lord's bond servants. We will all be your servants, and that one's going to die. And he said, 
Now also, let it be according to your words. So the servant says, okay, we're going to do what you say. He with whom it shall be found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. So, so he changed it. The servant said, no, it's not going to be that way. It's not that you're all going to be servants and he's going to die. Whoever is found with that one is going to be my Lord's servant, and the rest you can go free. Then they speedily took every man down his sack to the ground and opened every man his sack. They couldn't wait to show him they were innocent. And he searched and began at the eldest. See, how did he know their ages? Oh, began at the eldest and left at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes and laid it, every man his ass, and returned to the city. So they're like going... Yeah, only Benjamin is the one that's going to be servant, but we're not letting this happen. We're all going back. So this is really shows how they were really caring about Benjamin. They weren't just going to let Benjamin go back and be a servant. We're all going back, and we're going to figure this out. Which they did the right thing. They were being tested, and they did the right thing. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there. They weren't very far out of the city. And they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? Did ye not know that such a man as I can certainly divine? Don't you know that I can figure all this out? And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak, or how shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of thy servants. They're finally confessing the iniquity of thy servants, both we and he, he also with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, go in peace to your father. So he's testing them to see what they're going to do now. Then Judah came near unto him and said, O oh my Lord. Let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead. And he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Bring him down. Then I may set my eyes upon him. And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. And thou said unto thy servant, Except the youngest brother come down, you shall see my face no more. And it came to pass, when we came up unto thy servant, my father, we told him the words, and our father said, go again and buy us a little food. And we said, we cannot go down unless our younger brother be with us. Then will we go down. For we may not see the man's face except our younger brother be with us. And thy servant, my father, said unto us. See how I keep calling him, the father is even his servant. Ye may know my wife bare me two sons. And the one went out from me. And I said, surely he is torn in pieces. And I saw him not since. And if ye take this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Now therefore, when I come to thy servant my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing his life is bound up in the lad's life. For thy servant, now he's talking about himself, Judah, became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame of my father forever. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant, he's saying, let me abide instead of the lad. Now he's willing to give his life for the lad. A bondman to my Lord, he says, I'll be your servant. And let the lad go with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come upon my father. Okay, so the brothers pass the test at this point. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before them all that stood by him, and he cried. 
he just cried out loud. He couldn't control it anymore because it just touched his heart that they would sacrifice themselves. How, the, the, the hearts changed. Their hearts had changed. Yeah, yeah. He could not refrain himself before all them that stood by, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. So he wanted all the Egyptians to leave. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept loud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. So he was crying so loud. See, Joseph had his house. Pharaoh had his house. The Egyptians had all left and everybody heard. That's how serious. I mean, he was letting go of... Remember when he named his one son, I'm going to forget. This will, God is going to help me forget my family. Because he thought he'd never see them again. So now it's like... A, just a dream come true. It's just a dream come true. And letting go of all that. Yeah, letting go of all the pain of all those years. Yeah. All the suffering for all those years. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. It scared them so bad. They were kind of worried about themselves. <laughs> Would he take retribution on them now? And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near unto me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I'm Joseph your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you. He's saying God's the one who worked this all out, even though what they did was wrong. See, God can make good out of mistakes. This was a worldwide famine, and all of the grain with his wisdom that he had saved preserved life on earth, but it also preserved the life of the chosen line. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years. Remember, there was going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine in which there shall be neither earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Joseph is a type of Christ. Oh, yeah. Remember what he said on the cross? Oh, forgive them for they know not what they do. This guy could forgive these. And you know what? Christ, he came into his own, his own people and they received him not. Same with Joseph. He was rejected by his own family, his brothers. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Okay, we're going to end it right there at verse 9.